Dear friends, welcome to the Real Facts channel. In this episode, I would like to tell you an amazing and touching story about a cunning and clever wolf. This story is very interesting and I am sure it will not leave you indifferent. Watch the video until the end and you'll see for yourself. At the end of the 19th century, in the northern part of Mexico, in Carampo, lived a large gray wolf named Lobo. Local shepherds knew Lobo very well and were always terrified when he and his wolves appeared in the valley. Lobo was the leader of the pack. He was famous for his cunning and temper. No wonder that his nickname was the King of Carampo. It was very strange that Lobo's pack was quite small, consisting of only five predators, because strong wolves like Lobo usually have bigger packs with them. But Lobo's predators were very loyal. Many shepherds tried to shoot at least one wolf from Lobo's pack, but they couldn't succeed. For more than five years, shepherds had been losing one cow daily because of wolves. Over the entire time span, wolves had taken about 2,000 cows. Furthermore, they always attacked only the best cows from the herd. They didn't touch old sick ones. One night, wolves from Lobo's pack attacked 250 sheep. Two shepherds woke up because of the wolves attacking their flock. Stupid sheep don't think for themselves but always follow their leaders. Normally, the goats are the leaders among the sheep. Clever and cunning Lobo immediately attacked all the goats and got rid of them. After that, the sheep scattered throughout the land. The shepherds had to search for them for a long time, but they mostly only found their lifeless bodies. Lobo became a real disaster for local farmers, and they announced a reward for his head. Once, a shepherd saw the pack tearing a cow apart. He drove the wolves away and poured poison on the meat of the cow. The next day, the shepherd was shocked as the wolves ate only those pieces of meat on which there was no poison. After some time, the reward for Lobo's head increased. The sum of $1,000 was offered. The wolf had never been valued at such a high price. Many hunters came to Carumbo to catch the wolf. One hunter named Tenere came from Texas. He brought guns, horses, and a pack of wolfhounds with him. At home, he had already shot down a huge number of wolves, so he had no doubt that he would easily catch Lobo. In the morning, he took the dogs and went hunting. The wolfhounds quickly found a trace. Tenere saw the wolves in the distance, but he couldn't catch them. In the late evening, the hunter counted his dogs, and not all of them had returned, only six from the pack remained. Tenere went hunting twice more, until his beloved horse died. Then Tenere returned home to Texas. Other hunters kept coming, but also returned home with nothing. Joe Kalin's farm was situated among the rocks. Not far from the farm, Lobo and his she-wolf made a lair. They were living there all summer, attacking cows, sheep, and farmer dogs. The desperate farmer invited the famous wolf hunter Ernest Seton Thompson. The man agreed to catch the famous wolf himself. He claimed that it would take him two weeks to get rid of all the wolves of Carumpo, but the fight lasted almost three months. First, Ernest traveled around the region and got acquainted with the area. He realized that instead of hunting Lobo with dogs and horses, it was more efficient to hunt with traps and poison. He sprinkled meat with various types of poison many times, but the wolf never came across it. The hunter tried various methods. He used a bone knife so that there was no smell of metal, put gloves on so that there was no smell of a human being, and even tried not to breathe on the meat. Everything was in vain. The cunning Lobo avoided the poison meat and bypassed all the traps. The wolf only ate the meat of those cows that he had personally attacked. Moreover, Lobo was mocking the hunter. Once, he gathered all the pieces of poisoned meat together, put them in one big pile, and pooped on top of it. The hunter, with two helpers, set traps for a whole week. Lobo was able to find all of them successfully. He carefully dug the ground around the traps so that the other wolves could see them and not fall into them. He was very smart. Some shepherds even said that Lobo was possibly a werewolf. Following the footprints in the snow, Seton Thompson noticed that sometimes a small wolf ran ahead of the leader. This was very weird because normally the leader of the pack severely punishes the insolent for such rudeness, but it didn't happen in this case. The shepherds told him that it was Blanca, the she-wolf of Lobo. The hunter realized that the old wolf was in love. Blanca was a beautiful white she-wolf. Lobo let her do more than the others. Furthermore, the shepherds often observed from afar how Blanca violated the pack's order. The hunter came up with a new plan immediately. He took some meat and set two traps nearby so that they could be clearly seen. He also put separately one more piece of meat and hid six traps around it. After that, Ernest took a wolf's paw and put many footprints near the traps. This night, Lobo was howling furiously, and the hunter realized that his plan had worked. In the morning, they went to check the traps, and yes, one wolf was caught. 
On the ground, footprints were clearly visible. People walked along the track, and after a mile, they saw Blanca with a trap on her paw. She was dazzling white, a very beautiful she-wolf. Blanca turned to the people and started howling. She was calling for help. They threw a rope around her neck and left her there. Lobo didn't leave her all night. He was trying to help her, but it was all in vain. Then they tied the body of the she-wolf to a horse and dragged it along the ground. Lobo was piteously howling all day. When Lobo saw his dead mate, his howl was heartbreaking. Having lost his rationality from grief, the wolf followed Blanca's footsteps to the farm. Lobo fell into one of the traps, but the wolf managed to break out of it and the hunter realized that he had made a mistake. It would have been better to take Blanca alive and use her as bait. The hunter set 130 traps. He took Blanca's paw and made a line of footprints on the traps with it. On the first day, the hunter didn't manage to get around to all of the traps, but on the second day, he saw Lobo. The wolf was caught. Love and affection for the she-wolf ruined him. When the hunter approached the wolf, he howled and began to call his pack for help, but no one came. Lobo was snapping and biting. He fought till the end. Forgive me, but I have to finish you off, the hunter told him and threw a rope around his neck. The strong wolf easily bit the rope off. The hunter didn't shoot him. He did not want to ruin his skin. He returned to the farm to ask others for help and to take a new rope. When they returned, they didn't kill the wolf. Men tied the mouth and paws of the wolf with a rope and threw him on a horse. At the farm, Ernest examined the wolf. There were many battle scars on his body. The man put a collar with a strong chain over the wolf. Lobo was indifferent to everything. He didn't drink water, didn't eat meat, and didn't call his pack for help. As a lion who loses its strength, as an eagle who loses its freedom, and as a dove separated from its mate, Lobo went through a triple test as he lost his strength, freedom, and mate. When morning came, the wolf was still laying there, but was no longer breathing. The hunter took the chain from the neck of the wolf. One of the hunters helped him to move it under the canopy where his beloved Blanca was laying. They put Lobo near the she-wolf, and the hunter said, No one will ever tear you apart now. After this incident, Seton Thompson stopped hunting wolves. He began the campaign to save the nature of the American Wild West. Seton Thompson wrote his first story about wild animals, and it isn't difficult to guess who he has chosen as a main character. He couldn't forgive himself Lobo's death until the end of his own life. That was a touching story about a wolf who changed a human. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next episode.